Hi Knitters, I'm Louise from Wildflower Wool and welcome back to my channel. It is the last Friday of the month. So that means that this is an episode of Finish Fridays, which really is a recap of all my finishes that I've done during the month. I've taken all of those New Start Monday projects that I've started throughout the year and I have managed to finish them. When I finish them, I put them into this container and I save them until this Friday to show you what all I have finished for the month. I also have my ball band box here. So I can show you the number of ball bands, the number of balls that I have finished because I've collected the ball bands. I've added up the meters that I have knit this month and I've also added up the year to date total, which I, I'm pretty excited about. And the last thing I am going to show you in this video, I'm gonna give you a little demo of how I do my cast on, a long tailed two color cast on. You can use this cast on for really any project, but I'm specifically gonna show you what I do for a double knitting project. We are doing a knit along that starts the beginning of June, which is Monday. So really our, our rules around here are a little lax. So you can start anytime this weekend if you want to gather your yarn, your needles, do a swatch if you want a cast on, or even if you're just still looking for a pattern, that is totally fine. I'm gonna open up a thread over on Ravelry in the Fiber Friends group where we can do some chit chatting. The cowl is going to start from June 1st and it's going to run till the middle of August. And it can be any project that you want to double knit. It can be a scarf, it can be a pot holder slash dishcloth, it could be a hat, it could be socks, it could be a blanket. Whatever you are feeling up to. If you're a beginner and you just want to do a pot holder, that is the perfect beginner project. And since this is going right till the middle of, of um, August, if you want to get two projects in there, that would be totally fine as well. We have, um, we'll have a couple prizes. I know that Lucy Neepy, she is the queen of double knitting. She has offered a prize. So I'm assuming it will be uh, probably one of her double knit patterns that you could choose from. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I will show you what I do for my, my cast on. It's very simple. I do um, a two color long tail cast on, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. So first, let's look at this, my finished ball band box. You know, every month when I do these videos, I open up this big box and I think, oh my gosh, this is like looking still so empty, but I'm actually having hope well i don't know now it is looking a little empty i was going to say that i am having some hope that maybe i will get you know i don't know a good chunk of this filled by the end of the year maybe it's starting to look a little fuller and i have to say this month i've been just using these clips to keep them all um together i have the most finished ball bands that i've had this little teeny little bit. This was January. Um, where's February? February. Oh, only a couple again. March. I have to say, every month I've been getting a little more done. So maybe that has something to do with the fact... There's April. April had quite a few too. April and May. April and May were good months. Maybe it's the fact that I'm getting more things started every Monday when I'm starting two new projects. It gives me a more of a chance to get things finished, which means I get more ball bands in my box. But anyways, May. Give you a recap of May. I have nine ball bands in here. So there's a Nick, Nick Picks Dishy. There is a couple of my Baraco, Baraco Touche that I'm using, I'm knitting that green summer top with. So I think I am on my fourth ball of this. These are only 50 gram balls, so they do knit up really, really quickly. There was those. Oh, these guys here, the uh, Patton's Classic Wool, the Superwash DK Weight. I should have three of those. I have two actual ball bands, and then I made up one because one ball didn't have a ball band. Same with the, oh, what did I do? Oh, I got them mixed up. This one was actually for the uh, Barocco Touche because I had one of those green balls that didn't have a band. This is the Patton's DK. 
And this was for my blue sweater. Finished a bottle of that. And then this was just a dishcloth. Um, conch. This was, oh, this was the orange one that I finished. So that, that should be nine ball bands that I finished. So it doesn't mean I necessarily started and finished this month. It just means I started it sometime after January and I finished it in May. So nine balls finished out of my stash because I'm pretty, every all of this was stash yarn. So that is a pretty good, pretty good, good accomplishments. Okay, so I have some numbers here. So I finished nine ball bands this month. Okay, let's recap. January, this is in meters, 350 meters in January. Not bad, but not a whole, whole lot. February was 399, March 445, April 1084, and May, all of this, 1465 meters. I have been progressing my little, my little note here. Um, oh, what is, I have notes on the back of this. Not sure what that is. Anyways, these ones here <laughs> is telling me that every, every month I have gotten more knit than the month before. So my total year to date number of meters that I've knit is 3,743 meters. I think that's pretty impressive, especially for me. I'm finding that is pretty impressive. So we'll see. I don't know if every month I'm going to keep, ra if I keep going this way, I'm going to raise the bar pretty high for myself to, um, to try and beat the month before. So we'll see. I, I'm, I am thinking eventually I probably will not surpass, you know, one month, but that's okay. A little progress is, you know, better than nothing. So my box, getting a little full. I'm going to set it aside now for the next month. And we'll just keep, I'll start, I'll start collecting them for June. Okay, now let's look at the, my container here of finishes. I haven't looked at this, so I am going to go through these and see them at the same time that you're seeing them. So we'll look back. Okay, dishcloth. Okay, and I'm going to see, I don't even know how many dishcloths I have knit this month. If you remember, I was going to do, my goal was one, one a week. So I would have 52 at the end of the month or at the end of the year. I know I'm way above that. So this is the first one. This one is this one that looks a lot like Fisherman's Rib. It was a knit one below stitch, I do believe. There's both sides of it. And I know that this was, I love this cotton. And this was the banana colorway. This was one, I think I got four dishcloths made out of that 100 gram ball. And I see another one here. Oops, this is one I didn't do my, my ends still aren't woven. I better do that. Anyways, look at this. This was, um, oh yeah, this was, I like this one too. Look at that stitch. I really like that. So there's two done. Oh, I'm going to grab this stack. I know there's four sitting in here. This was from a couple of weeks ago. This was, oh, this color again, more of the banana colorway. I love this cotton. These blue variegated. This is a Bernat Handicrafter big ball I have. There was no band on it, so I don't know the colorway. But there, this one here was just a seed stitch. Super easy, and I like I never used to really like knitting seed stitch, but I actually don't mind it now. I actually really was excited to knit this. This here, a super simple diamond dishcloth. Knit from the point and decrease down. And another one here, a little bit larger. So it's knit as a diamond, but when you turn it sideways, it is a square. And another one. This was the week. I remember this week because I really wanted to just focus on um, quantity. I really wanted to try and get as many dishcloths as I could get done this week. So it was just simple. Simple knitting. I wasn't worrying about a different stitch pattern. It was just all about 
getting some dishcloths done and working on getting this big ball knit. So that was four from that week. Oh, and there's two more. Oh, these were just from last week. Look at that. I really like that. That, and again, this was still more of that, um, I love this cotton banana. And this is what almost finished it off was I striped the two. Handicrafter and I love this cotton. Again, super simple diamond dishcloth. And I didn't, I misjudged. I should have made this just a smidge bigger because I have a teeny tiny little bit of the yellow still left that I'll need to do into a scrappy dishcloth. So this ball band wasn't not added into um, my finished box because it isn't quite finished. Okay, this is sitting next on top of the box here. This was my blue sweater. Did you guys see the video where I, uh, I actually tried this on and showed it to you. I'm glad that I finished it a few weeks ago because now it is way too hot. Just the thought of trying this on makes me want to melt. <laughs> but anyways, there it is. So this was my gauge to garment sweater knit from the bottom up in the round. I steeped the armholes, which means I cut, I added an extra stitch in here for my, where I wanted the arm to go. And then I cut. And before I cut, I reinforced around that extra stitch that I added in. And then I cut up the center of that extra stitch, picked up stitches and knit an arm. All just by working with my gauge and my actual measurements to figure out how big I wanted each piece of the sweater. It's really quite simple. It sounds, it sounds a little more complicated than it is, but once you get the gist of it and once you've done it once, it is really quite easy to, um, to figure out, oh yes, look at this. I forgot this was in here. My purple scarf. This was a mistake rib, broken rib, mistake rib. Um, this was a really fun pattern too. Pretty much the last, all this month, I have been doing some kind of a variation of a rib pattern. This was a really fun pattern. This was two full balls of Patton's Classic Wool. Don't know the colorway, because again, there was no ball bands on these balls. Sometimes I've, I've gotten a lot of these um, balls from the uh, tent sale up at the Spinrite factory, and there's no ball bands on them. But I do know it's classic wool. A really pretty purple heathery type yarn. I know this scarf ended up being 88 inches long, which is really perfect because, oh, I may regret putting this on. <laughs> Too warm for wool right now. But I wanted something that could double around. You could wear it a few different ways. So I really like this. I was really, really happy with how this turned out. And this will probably be a gift for somebody. And what, oh, I have one more thing in my box. And this was, this was the pillar stitch. This was where you passed, passed a stitch over to get that, you can see that horizontal strand there. That was a fun pattern too. The edges on this one curl a smidge. So if I was probably going to do this for a scarf, I would put a couple of edge stitches on there just to hold them flat. But that was my finishes. So what do I have here? I've got my scarf, my scarf and a sweater, and how many dishcloths? A lot, quite a few. I think this is my biggest month for dishcloths, I'm pretty sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dishcloths. Nine dishcloths in a month, so just a little over two a week. Pretty good odds, I'd say. So overall, I would say this was a pretty good knitting month for me as far as, fit. I mean, getting a sweater finished, that is really exciting. Getting a scarf that was two full balls, that finished all these dishcloths, putting me way ahead in my dishcloths challenge, which is pretty exciting. That is it for my finishes. I've got a lot more on the go. What are you guys getting close to finishing. Do you have anything 
if you were to look at all your project bags and everything that you had on the needles right now, what do you think is your project that is the closest to being finished? If you want to type it down below, if it's socks, a shawl, a dishcloth, a hat, a sweater, what would it be? What do you think you're the closest? I know I have three projects that I'm getting close to finishing. My green sweater is getting close. I mean, it's close. I'm over, I'm over halfway. So that I guess I consider anything over halfway close. But what I'm really, really close on is a pair of socks and another scarf. So those will definitely be in my finished box for next month. So I hope you have had a very productive or at least fun, whatever you're knitting on. I hope it has been fun for this whole month of May. Um, yeah, it's hard, hard to believe. The month's oh, four weeks seems to go by in quite a hurry. Now I'm going to show you what I, I showed this to you. I think it was in the last Monday, Monday's New Start Monday video. This was my double knitting project that I was going to pull out. I've got the gray and the yellow side. This, I, this, this was just a kind of a cast on to begin with and it has got too many stitches on here. So I'm gonna take it out right now while we're chit chatting. I'm just gonna pull my needle out. Now, and now I will take it just a second and I will show you what happens. So once you have double knitting on your needle, if you take it out, is there gonna be enough on here? The stitches are gonna separate. I've got a gray side and a yellow side. And can you see what happens there? So if you were, if I had made a mistake, you see how they've all, they alternate. When they were on my needle, they were gray, yellow, gray, yellow, gray, yellow. They just alternated. Now that I've taken them off the needle, see how they have totally separated out? If I wanted to pick this back up and put them back on my needle, what I would have to do is I would have to alternate. I would have to pick up. I would have to kind of put them back together like a jigsaw puzzle. I would have to alternate them again. I'd have to go yellow, gray, yellow, gray, yellow. So you'd have to kind of weave your needle back and forth. But anyways, that's a lesson for another time. Right now, for any of you getting started, and I know there was a comment on last Monday's video saying that, that um, some people had looked at up, up some different YouTube videos and they were wondering what was the best way to cast on for double knitting. There are quite a few ways and like anything else, everybody kind of has their favorite way. And I'll show you, <laughs> getting my hair tangled in here. I'll show you what I do for mine. It's a two, two color long tail cast on, which is pretty simple. And it's, and you, this isn't just for double knitting. I'll do this for any, any, any two color project I have. I generally do this for just because I like how, how it knits up. So let's see here. I may be making more of a mess. I'll line them up. So if you're knitting or thinking about joining our double knitting knit along, have you found your project yet? Have you, have you picked a pattern? If you haven't, I mean, I'm sure there's tons available on Ravelry. Lucy Neepy is, of course, um, I always call her the queen of double knitting. If you want to take, if you want to see some really fun double knitting patterns, go take a look on YouTube or YouTube, go look on Ravelry. And I guess probably go look up Lucy Lucy Neatby. So it's Neatby is spelled N-E-A-T-B-Y. She's a Canadian designer. I've met her in person. She's lovely. And um, she is who I learned double knitting from. She has many videos on YouTube. She has some tutorials. Um, she also has a lot of patterns. She's got a really um, fantastic um, do I want to call it a series of double knitted blankets 
They're done in the round, started from the center out, and they are stunning. Now, if you haven't done double knitting before, I would not suggest starting those blankets just because they're large and, well, they're large, <laughs> mostly large, and it's a little more, the color changes are a little trickier on there for until you've done something simple and you can read your, your stitches. I wouldn't jump right into those. Sunburst, though, would be the easiest one to start with, I think. But there's Zinnia, there's Blossom, there's Sunburst. I think there's one, I think there's one called Snowfire. And uh, Mardi Gras, I think, is another one. Anyways, there is, they're nice. They're fun. You should go look at them. They're just worth, just for the wow factor alone. It, they're fun to go look at. Okay, so I've got my yarn all untangled here. So if you're going to do a two color long tail cast on, typically with the long tail cast on, if I was just going to use my gray, you would pull out, I always kind of guess, I kind of go from one shoulder all the way out, you can't see my arm, but a full shoulder to fingertip length with a worsted weight yarn, that'll give you about 50 stitches is what I always estimate. So with a long tail, if you were going to cast on, you know, X number of stitches, you would pull out your tail, make a slip knot and, ca and start casting on with your tail. With two color long tail, you do not need to pull out that long tail. All you need to do is grab, find the ends of both of your colors, leave enough of a tail so you've got en enough to weave in and make your slip knot. So our tail, we're not gonna worry about. We're just gonna ignore it because all this is gonna be done is gonna be put on a darning needle and we're gonna weave it in after our project is all over. With long tail, well, you always have two lengths of yarn that you're going to work your stitches with. This time, instead of it being all one color where we have our tail and our yarn attached to the ball, we're going to use two colors that are attached to the ball. So just ignoring this tail, your pinky finger is going to grab both of these yarns, your thumb and your finger go in the end. So you kind of make your slingshot like you normally do with a long tail cast on. We've got a color over our finger and we have a color over our thumb. We're gonna alternate those. The color that is over your finger, right now it's yellow, that is the color that makes, that is the color of the stitch on the needle. Whatever is on your finger, I always think of the finger as the top, the thumb as the bottom. Whatever's on the top is the stitch on the needle. Whatever is on the bottom, which is your thumb, that is the color of the chain that's going to go along the bottom of your stitches, of your cast on stitches. So now that I've done a stitch, I'm going to twist these yarns. Now I have the gray on top of my finger. I do a long tail cast on. The gray is on my finger, which is on top, which now means I make a gray stitch on my needle. I twist my yarns around, so now I have yellow on top and I make a stitch and I have a yellow. So my, my double slip knot here, I'm not gonna count that in there. Right now it looks like I've got this double stitch and one, two, three. All I wanna count is one, two, three. This slip knot, after, when we work our first row, when we get to the end of the row, I'm just gonna let that slide off. If I had double pointed needles right now, I could take this and slide it off and I could just pull it off. Actually, let's pretend we're doing that. I just grab straight needles. You, with double knitting, you can use straight needles. You can use circular needles. There. So see, I've got that, that slip knot. I'm just going to pull it out and get rid of it. So if I want to keep going, I know that the last stitch I did here was yellow. So I know my next stitch I want to be gray. So in this case, because I was chit-chatting with you, I dropped my yarns. So I know because this last stitch was yellow, I now want to have a gray next. So I'm gonna turn, twist these yarns, 
So I have the gray over my finger because whatever yarn is on my finger is going to make the stitch on the needle. And then I twist them again and I'm always twisting in the same direction. And I'm just gonna keep going. And keep going. Double knitting stitches, you always think of them as pairs because we're knitting both sides of the fabric. Remember the little piece that I pulled out? There was a gray side and there was a yellow side. So this yellow stitch is going to be the, the front. The gray, this, I did that backwards. This stitch, I did. they're going, I should, I should really leave that until I actually get knitting. And we'll talk about that in the next video. Let's leave it at that. I don't want to get too complicated. Let's just talk about the cast on. So for what all I want you to realize is that I made that slip knot and then I used one color over my finger, one color over my thumb, and I'm just twisting them and alternating. Just twist and alternate. Whoops. Okay, so that one I kind of messed up. So if you have to like let your fingers drop, let the yarns drop, again, yellow was the was my last stitch, so I know that this one is going to be gray. So I'm going to make sure, if I was to pick up my yarns like this, I should see that this is gonna be a problem because I've got yellow over my finger, which means I have two yellow stitches, which I don't want. So I'll take that off. So I know if I get distracted or I talk and I have to come pick up my yarns again, I'm gonna twist them because I want my next stitch to be gray. Gray needs to be on my finger. And then I do my long tail. And you wanna have, well, it's gonna say an even number. I always like to cast on an even number. There's always exceptions to every rule. If you're gonna have some edge stitches on here, you may have an odd number, but generally when I'm doing double knitting, I always cast on an even amount of stitches. Because if you're, say we're doing a, a dishcloth or a hot pad, and I wanted it to be 20 stitches wide, I am going to cast on 40 stitches because I'm going, going to have 20 stitches of yellow on one side and I'm gonna have 20 stitches of gray on the other side. So with double knitting, we're knitting both sides at the same time as we work across our row. So that's one tip. If you're just gonna, if you're ever deciding to wing this and just do something on your own, you have to cast on twice as many stitches as the project is wide. So see, I've got my alternating stitches on top of the needle. I've got a yellow, a gray, a yellow, a gray, a yellow, gray, a yellow, gray. So I've got one pair, two, three, four, five, six. I need to end with a gray. There. So now I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I have fourteen stitches on my needle. So if I was just to keep working this now in double knitting, that would mean my project is actually going to end up being seven stitches wide. I have 14 and it's gonna split out so I have seven yellow and seven gray. Now let's take a peek at the bottom here. And so you kind of have, I, don't know, I always like to cut like a braid because we're alternating stitches on top of our needle. It also alternates this chain along the bottom. And it just gives you a nice color work. Now, if you wanted this to be solid, you could just, um, you could cast on in one color. I could have cast on all of my 14 stitches in gray, or I could have done them all in yellow, and I would have had a solid cast on itch. And that's fine if that's the look you're wanting for, to go for, but the benefit of alternating colors like this is it's, it, you're helping set up your first row of double knitting. Because now when I'm going to turn this around, so I've got my point at the right, right hand edge. And if I dropped my needle here, so if I was going to start knitting here, I've got a gray. You can see I have a gray stitch first and its pair is the yellow. I'm going to start knitting the gray and purl the, purl the yellow. And I'm just going to work across and knit one, purl one. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I deal with the edge stitches. The edge stitches on double knitting can be a little tricky and it 
takes just a little patience and practice to get those edge stitches nice and neat. And that's what we'll talk about next week or the next video. Um, yes. So that is that. So if you ever had a burning desire to know how to do a two color long tail cast on, that is how you do it. This is, it works great. There's none of that pulling out and estimating the amount of yarn you need. It gives you this pretty edge stitch on the bottom, that chain stitch along the bottom, and it kind of sets you up for your first row of double knitting. So that is that everybody. So I hope that maybe some of you will be enticed to try a simple pattern for our double knitting knit along. It'll give you something new to learn if you've never tried double knitting before. It is kind of fun. It is kind of magic to see the color separate and to be knitting the front side and the back side all at the same time. I hope you have a great weekend. I will be right back here on Monday with another new start Monday video with two new starts. So I'm going to have to think over the weekend what those will be because as of right now, I do not know what they're going to be. But one will be a dishcloth and something else. I'll just have to see what I am inspired to knit over the weekend and go up to the yarn room, pull some yarn off the, uh, the shelves and see what I can come up with. So I hope that you have left me a comment down below to let me know which is your closest project to being finished. And I'd also like you to let me know, you know, are you inspired to try double knitting? Have you ever tried it? Have you heard of it? I'd love to know. So and I'd also like to take just a moment to thank everybody who has been watching my videos, who has subscribed and who has commented. We, we have, we have grown this, this little channel that I started has grown quite a bit in the last few months. And that really surprises me. And I really, truly am thankful for everybody spending their time with me and just chatting, knitting with me, because it really does make me happy. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday. Bye for now.